my seven chakras episode 192 nothing is good nothing is bad when this dawns in your consciousness suddenly you are together all fragments have disappeared into one unity you are crystallized you are centered the seven chakras swirling vortices of energy positioned throughout our body from the base of the spine to the crown of the head for thousands of years This ancient wisdom has been passed on from master to disciple. What are the functions of these energy centers? And could these chakras help you unlock your destiny and find your true purpose? Welcome to My 7 Chakras. And now, your host, Aditya Jai Kumar. What's up, Action Tribe? AJ here, founder and host of My 7 Chakra, place where we dive deep into the ancient world to uncover nuggets of wisdom that will help you find your life's purpose. So if you love spirituality, but if you're looking for actionable steps that you can take right away to change your life, then my friend, you are at the right spot. Now, before we move on to the interview, like always, we're going to read out our latest iTunes review. Today's review is by a person called ADHD Boogie, who writes, I love this podcast and I listen religiously thank you Aditya Action Tribe and in particular AHDH AHDH Boogie thank you so much for listening to my show so religiously and I promise you there is a ton of super inspiring and actionable content in store for you in 2017 now as you know I'm really proud of the reviews I receive and I take the time to read them out as well so if you want your review to be read out as well make sure you share your views your experiences and your thoughts in the form of an iTunes review how do you do that it's super simple if you're on your podcast app on your iphone just hit reviews and then hit write a review you can also use this link to jump directly onto the itunes review page now the link that you need is my seven chakras.com forward slash review that's my seven chakras.com forward slash review you know one review from you is a giant leap for the show so especially if the show has inspired you make sure you leave us your review and with that i'm super excited to bring you our featured guest for today chetan parkin so chetan are you ready to inspire I am indeed, AJ. Lovely to be here. Awesome. Thanks a lot for joining us. Chetan Parkin is the author of Human Design, The Book of Lions, and the most recent book, The Book of Destinies. Chetan Parkin has been giving readings to people of all walks of life and all nationalities for over 35 years. He has spent the past 23 years mastering human design. He is more than a leading practitioner of the system as the author of the first major book on the subject, which has been translated into 11 different language versions. He has made it his mission to bring human design to the world. He is the world's most successful practitioner of human design and holds frequent workshops and seminars all around the world. So Chetan, thank you so much for joining us today. I can't wait to get started. Here we are. Let's do it. Beautiful. So to kick off the show, my first question to you is, what is your favorite inspirational quote and how does that quote apply in your day-to-day life? Well, it's the quote that I put in my first book, Human Design, Discover the Person You Were Born to Be. And the quote is by Osho. Osho is a spiritual master, uh, has many, many millions of people now involved in his work. And this was one quote out of, uh, I would have to say, thousands and thousands of discourses that he gave over the years. Nothing is good, nothing is bad. When this dawns in your consciousness, suddenly you are together. All fragments have disappeared into one unity. You are crystallized. You are centered. This is one of the greatest contributions of Eastern consciousness to the world. And how does that quote apply to your life? It's so easy for us to be judgmental to uh, write off people and things as good and Mm. bad. And I've just found I've constantly had to remind myself about this, that we're here in the middle of something that is beyond our understanding. And uh, it is so important to be centered in one's life and to not be casting judgments all over the place. Thanks a lot for sharing. Action Drive, before being judgmental, before drawing to a conclusion, meditate on this wonderful thought, nothing is good, nothing is bad, which I think is really profound. Thanks a lot for sharing that wonderful quote with us, Chetan. And with that, let's dive in. My question is, what inspired you to write your book, The Book of Destinies? I mean, it goes back a long way, AJ. Uh, I think all of us have had points of time in our life when we felt very confused and uh, concerned Am I on the right track? Am I doing the right thing? Um, and it was certainly my story. Um, I came to a point in time in my life, I was 27 years old, 
And I was completely lost in my world. I'd done all the right things, made all the right moves, uh, got qualifications, studied hard. I was good at what I did, but I just really wasn't enjoying my life. And I realized that I needed assistance. I needed some uh, objective viewpoint into my life. And the consequence of that, the uh, assistance I received in that time was so profound that it completely changed my life journey. And I just felt at that time, if I could render something like that advice into the world and make that possible for other people to have that experience, to appreciate themselves, to appreciate themselves being on the right track in this lifetime, then I would do that. And sure enough, this uh, Book of Destinies, this latest of these three books, uh, that is exactly what this book is about. It's it's informing people, it's reminding them, it's supporting them, it's encouraging them to be clear in their own life and what they came here for. Wonderful. So you mentioned that all of us at some point in life feel a bit confused, a bit concerned about whether we are on the right path. And that point might be if when we're young, maybe in our 20s, and sometimes it happens later on, maybe when we're in our 40s or 50s. But at that point, we feel a bit confused or concerned whether we're on the right path. And when it happened to you, uh, you realized that Firstly, you were doing well, uh, you know, you were good at what you were doing, you, you you were well educated, but you felt that you needed some assistance, some advice, some outside perspective on what to do next to make you feel like you're on the right path. And uh, we're going to dive deeper into your story. But I think that was a wonderful response that you shared with us, because I think many of our listeners uh, are able to relate to what you went through at that stage. So my question is, what exactly is human design? In its simplest way, human design is a gift for humanity. I think everybody listening would appreciate that the world is going through dramatic changes at the moment. Whether we're talking about climate change, whether we're talking about political change, whether we're talking about consciousness change, whether we're watching the whole system around politics and money and nationality and racism, there is so much turmoil at the moment. And if you don't really understand what your life is about, if you don't know what you gave yourself to come into to play out in this lifetime, if you're out of touch with that, if you've forgotten, if you've forgotten what your sole agreement was before you came in here, then human design gives it back to you. It, it reminds you of what you came here for how to live it out in the most successful and fulfilling way, and how to actually be a celebrant of life rather than somebody that's always concerned if they're actually on track with anything at all, if they're fulfilling any kind of purpose whatsoever. So human design gives you that back, and it's unique in a sense because it's a self-empowerment tool. When you understand your human design and the books we've written, the reports we've generated for everybody, we put this in very, very simplistic terms, very simple per terms anybody can understand. And we've given you what we call three keys, very simple things to understand. And when you start enacting those three keys in your life, according to your own design, according to exactly what you came in here to live out, then all of a sudden your life starts making an awful lot more sense. And mm -hmm. all kinds of things start fitting into place that were probably just a puzzle before. Absolutely. You, you spoke about the numerous changes that we're experiencing as a species right now. And some of them you've elaborated as uh, climate change, change in consciousness around the world, change in technology, change in politics. And there are so many changes that a lot of people might feel a bit overwhelmed, a bit stressed out and a bit worried about what's going to happen in the future, especially if they aren't in direct control or they cannot affect the change just by themselves or maybe they feel that way. And uh, like you've rightly mentioned, if we've forgotten, forgotten in inverted quotes, because we've all come here for a particular reason, but if we've forgotten our life's contract, why we came here, uh, the human design reminds us of our reason for being here on this planet. It's a self empowerment tool, as you've put it. So, Chetan, I have read that you are an entrepreneur's son. Is that correct? That is true. Uh, my dad uh, was a, he had what we might describe as a photographic memory. And oh. uh, it's an extraordinary device that you could open a page in front of him, you know, in a book and shut the thing almost immediately. <laughs> He'd read it back to you. So he just had this very brilliant mind and um, he was always exploring, you know, different ways in which uh, things could be put together and uh, very, very successful in his time. Very inspiring man. So 
you know, even I'm an entrepreneur's son and, you know, my dad did a lot of trials and experimentations. And I think one of the things that was key was his ability to not give up, even in, uh, you know, situations of trial and challenges and, and difficulties. But my question to you is, what was it like growing up as an entrepreneur's son in your case? I was fortunate in the fact that both of my parents just, uh, they never criticized they just encourage. Mm. And I think it goes along with what you're saying about your dad, AJ, okay, that uh, you, you just don't give up. You, know? yeah. you get the vision of something, <laughs> and you put your energy towards it, and you just go for it. Um, and you go for it from a place of your own clarity. I think that's the beauty of being the entrepreneur is that uh, you get these sensations inside yourself. You know yes. uh, what it is that's uh, drawing your attention. And you put your gifts and your talents towards it, whatever that might be. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely agree because there's nobody to tell you that it's not possible, especially if you are brought up in an entrepreneurial household. Now, my question to you is, now I currently live in Vancouver, Canada, but I'm originally from Mumbai in India. And I know that you've spent some time in India, in particularly in Mumbai as well as Pune. So what brought you to India and in particular maybe you could talk to us about your life in 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 Mumbai well it, it's a uh, I have a great attraction for India India is very very close to my heart um, I spent about four years living there altogether but uh, what got me there in the first place um, as an engineer I got a, a job uh, delivering um, one of these luxury motor yachts around the world and by the time I got to the motor yacht to deliver it um, and service it we found that it was in really bad shape. Uh, mm -hmm. It needed a lot of repairs. And the repairs, it was in the Bahamas at the time. The repairs took much longer than we thought. And it meant that to deliver it, uh, we would have to sail through the hurricane season across the Atlantic wow. to Europe. And sure enough, you know, <laughs> you don't want to go anywhere in the Bermuda Triangle when there's a hurricane. But sure <laughs> enough, we were, you know, two days out of Bermuda and we got hit by a hurricane. And eight days and nights, we got just smashed by this hurricane. We should have sunk several times. And for some reason or another, we didn't. But it was such a wake up for me, uh, you know, to be that close to dying without a trace, you know, sinking in the middle of the Atlantic with nothing going on. Um, it was such a shock for me that I, I went into a retreat for a year and a half. I went to a little croft house in the Shetland Islands, way up in the North Sea by Norway, and sat in this little croft house for a year and a half. And I read everything I could lay my hands on, spiritual texts, uh, all the religions, all the novels I could find, all the deep research that people have made into life. And towards the end of my stay there, my father passed away. And this was my ally. You know, this was my great friend in life. And so I went back down to England for his funeral. I took his ashes up to a place in Scotland and scattered the ashes where he loved the place. And went back and I was sitting with my head in my hands one night in this little croft house, wondering, you know, what's it all about now? And I felt his spirit come into the room. And I don't say this lightly. Uh -huh. uh, I had never had an experience uh, before or since like this. But it was quite unmistakably him, his spirit in a state of ecstasy. I felt him come twice around the room in an absolute state of ecstasy. It was extraordinary. And as he departed, I heard in my head, it's all right, you can go now. The subsequent events of that uh, found me driving a thing called the Magic Bus. And the Magic Bus uh, was a trip that used to go backwards and forwards from London to India to and also to Nepal. And I found myself behind the wheel of one of these buses driving uh, backwards and forwards to India. And, and it was such an adventure going through Europe, picking up passengers along the way, and then through Turkey, Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and into India. It was a, it really was a magical trip. and. In India. So, 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 so just to stop you right there, the magic bus, are you saying that you drove all the way from there to Nepal? Yes, I did. And several times, backwards oh. and forwards. And, you know, literally picking up passengers around cafes in Europe, you know, the, pe the word would go out. It was all word of mouth in those days. There was no internet. Mm -hmm. And uh, literally, I'd stop in a cafe for an hour or so. Everyone would uh, jump on board, throw their luggage on board. It was $60 one way to India. And uh, off we'd go. And it was an adventure the whole way. Um, great adventure. And I met some extraordinary people. What I found on the very first trip that I did, I found this out later on, that 26 of those people, out of the 43 seats, out of the 43 passengers, 26 of them were on their way to see Osho in India. And uh, he's a spiritual master, was living in Pune. And uh, sure enough, you know, <laughs> 
I kept running into them on later travels to <laughs> India. And what became very apparent to me is that their whole demeanor had changed. It's like, what happened to you? Something extraordinary has happened to you. And said, oh, yeah, I've been meditating with Osho, and it's just an amazing place. So one thing leads to another, and I end up going to Osho's ashram. And it's still open to this day. It's a meditation resort in these days. And uh, I spent the next several years living with Osho, living in his community. And I had a lot of questions about myself uh, that I had not been able to answer. And he would quietly recommend to people, look, if you've got a whole load of questions you want to ask about yourself, there's a man that lives in Mumbai. He's called mm-hmm. a Chai Shastri, a shadow reader. Go and talk to him. He'll tell you everything. And you'll never need to ask me another question. So I took the challenge. I went down there. It was quite a job finding this fellow. Um, he met me at the door and he said, oh, good. I was expecting you. Well, I hadn't made any kind of appointment that I was aware <laughs> of, but that's just how these folks are. And uh, he sends his son, son down with me to the parking lot and proceeds to take a measurement, the length of my shadow. I wasn't really paying attention, uh, but he took some kind of measurement with a funny looking stick. We go back up to the uh, apartment where this uh, shadow reader lives and he asks my date of birth. Uh, he asks for my full name. He does some kind of calculation from both of these details. He's right. satisfied with his calculation and then behind his desk he's got this huge bookshelf full of books and they to me they all look the same but he slides yeah. his chair along to one particular book, pulls it out, puts it on the table, opens it up to a page and starts reading me. And he starts off, I seem to remember, he started off a thousand lifetimes ago and a hundred lifetimes ago, just to, you know, give perspective on things. And then then he comes into last week, (laughs) this week, next week, and he's telling me all about my life, how I grew up in England, all the things that happened, the work I was doing, where I'd traveled to. Uh, He told me all kinds of things. It's like he'd been following me my whole life. Yeah. Yeah. Extraordinary. And he gets to the end of the reading and he closes up the book and he turns to me and says, uh, I want you to come and work with me because you know how to do this work. Mm. And it's like, I'm a mechanical engineer, apparently. Uh, well, a retiring one, apparently, according to his words. And, uh, <laughs> you know. Because you were not old, right? You, you were still young. I was 27 years old. I just yeah. turned 27. And mm-hmm. um, I sat with his question, you know. And about, you know, after 30 seconds, I went through all these scenarios, you know, living in Mumbai, learning Sanskrit, learning all these different things. And I said, no, I can't possibly do this. And he thought that was really funny because he could see exactly what was happening with my life and I couldn't. And he said, well, it doesn't matter because you're going to do this work anyhow. And my suggestion is you find some way of reading for people because you've got this gift. Um, You've been doing it for many lifetimes and uh, you've got this gift to be able to tell people about themselves. So find some way of telling people because there's a system that's going to come into your life. You're going to write books about it. You're going to do readings for people all over the world. You're going to introduce it to hundreds of thousands of people all over the world. And it's going to change their lives. Well, I'm talking about 1979. I then started learning how to read for people, hands, cards, faces, astrology, I Ching, all kinds of different means of looking into people's lives and learning how to tell people things about themselves in ways that they could easily accept. And sure enough, 1993, an old friend of mine sends me a copy of my human design chart. And I take one look at this chart and I know immediately this is what the shadow reader was telling me. This was the system. Mm-hmm. And so ever since then, that's what I've been doing, AJ. I've been reading for people. I've been researching this. I've been having deep meditation into the meaning of the whole system. And yeah, I found absolutely conveying this knowledge to people in a way that they can imbibe it and, and become clear about their own life. It has a huge transformational effect for people. Got it. Now, all of this uh, sounds like the movie Doctor Strange. Have you seen the movie? I have indeed. Yes, I, I <laughs> like it. Sounds exactly. It's got some very good parallels. <laughs> Absolutely. And the only word that I could use to describe your experience is mystical and magical. Now, this reading that you received in Mumbai is really fascinating. As an engineer, as a fact-based, empirical-driven person, how did you react to the seemingly mystical information that you got from that reader? Were you a bit skeptical in the beginning, or did you laugh it out, or was there a part of you that sort of believed what you had just heard? You know, honestly, AJ, it was impossible to be skeptical. Hmm. It was so accurate. Right. It, and when you, you know, 
And that's the beautiful thing about human design as well. It, it, it's, it's, you know, some people try to be skeptical about it, but it is so accurate. This is one of these magical systems that can just look yes. right into life. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess we all have beliefs about life and what's good and bad or, you know, what we want to do and what we don't want to do. But when you get faced with something that just is absolutely on spot, uh, it's impossible to deny it. Wonderful. Now, over the years, could you talk to us about how has human design changed people's lives? I think by now, if I consult my records, I've read for somewhere between five and 6,000 people all over the world, all walks of life. Um, and what I see happening for people is when I read for them, they have a recognition. There's a light bulb goes on. There's a, there's a, the spirit starts moving. I mean, here we are. We're spirit in human form, with consciousness in human form, dealing with 3D, dealing with the material world. And I think spirit has a very easy time in fifth dimension, sixth, seventh, eighth, whatever, how many dimensions. But I think spirit coming into the three, into the solid, it's a very, very hard journey. It's a difficult journey. And I think all of us can congratulate ourselves for, for being here and somehow managing it at all. Um, and what I found with human design is when I read for people uh, and they get it and they light up and they see and it's like, I hear sighs of relief. I see, um, light eyes lighting up i see the spirit coming back into you know recognition mm -hmm. again i see people um getting a sense of being in touch with their life again and uh i mean there's so many instances i i particularly remember reading for parents uh, yeah. uh of a child and it was quite clear to me these parents adored each other they absolutely adored each other they were so in love with each other and they, they have a child a little boy and it's almost like they invite into their love life a whirlwind of chaos. And this little child, you know, is just, it, they don't have a life anymore because everything is a trouble. And so they, you know, they've consulted all kinds of psychologists and school experts and everybody. And they come to me and they say, you know, can you help? <laughs> so yeah. I, you know, I look at their designs and I see how very intertwined they are with each other. And I look at the little boy's design and I can see right away what it is that's going on there. And I make some suggestions and I, I point out a few things and they're turning to each other and kind of, how does he know this stuff? You know, how can he be seeing <laughs> these things? And uh, it was just a wonderful thing because what I was able to recommend is that this child had a, had, would get his own private tutor that who would be somebody that would, you know, two hours a day would devote absolute hundred percent attention to this child and, you know, give him room to explore everything. <laughs> And this, you know, this is what they put into motion. And what I get to hear is all of a sudden that they're, they're a really, really happy family again. And uh, so, you know, that was one instance I can think of. I can think of one of my great friends who just, um, whenever he tried to get into a relationship, it was a disaster. You mm -hmm. know, he would get involved with the people and they'd turn him down and they'd cause him trouble. And, and I just said to him, look, according to your design, it really works best if you allow people to approach you rather than you go chasing after them, to give it a try. And then it just happened, you know, that he's totally involved in something else. His attention is completely somewhere else, and somebody approaches him, and it's an instant click. And the two of them mm. just, you know, they're made for each other, and they just totally work so beautifully with each other, and it just came about. He was not looking overtly. He was allowing life to bring someone to him. So I've got so many stories like this of, of people having these uh, major breakthroughs in their life just by living according to their own design. Beautiful. Thanks a lot for sharing. Uh, now, in your book, uh, you give readers an opportunity to determine their life theme. Uh, my question is, what exactly is a life theme and how is that related to human design? Okay. So human design is a system. Uh, it's a system yeah. that I say, you know, if you pay attention to these three keys that you've got, uh, you will start having a very amazing life experience uh, beyond what you've been expecting. The Book of Destinies, uh, what is in this book is there are 192 different life themes. And that is basically what's available for us as human beings on this planet. We come in on a particular frequency, and there are 192 of these different frequencies to come in on. So we each have one of these for our lifetime. And it's almost like the storyline of your life. It's something that will just carry you through your life. It's the theme of your life. And when you recognize it, and there's a whole page in each uh, on each of these life themes in the book, all 192 of them are listed there. 
And when you tune into your life theme and you see exactly this is a frequency that is very akin to your nature. And if you trust it and you, you recognize it and you go along with it, you'll see that it just, it's like a boat. It carries you. And then, of course, you'll want to look at the life themes of the people in the world around you, your parents, for instance, your children, the people mm-hmm. you work with. And all of a sudden, there's a whole new understanding of how these wonderful differences that there are being here on Earth, how they all get to play out. And you see, when we understand what our own life's about and we honor that and, you know, totally respect our own life journey, then we start recognizing, oh, yes, these other people in my life have these very special attributes in their lives as well. And I can start honoring their way as well, even though it's something completely different from my own way. And so we start sharing this sense of acceptance. And from the acceptance comes this whole thing of being in a state of more love being experienced here on earth because we're honoring each other to be who we really are. Wonderful. Thanks a lot for sharing that. Now, just so our listeners can get a better understanding of what we're talking about here, could you give us a real life example of a life theme? And I believe you've also given examples of a few influencers and celebrities in your book. Uh, Those examples could work as well. Oh, indeed. Yes. Uh, So somebody probably very um, interesting for you in your life, uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, chain blew out the whole British Raj system. Just that was that <laughs> extraordinary yes. that one man would be the figurehead for this whole movement. And his life theme was a life theme that we call upheaval. And what I could say, you know, I, he was gone before I was able to uh, have any connection with him. But what could be said about him is he would walk into a room and you would not miss him. He he carried that energy through this life theme of upheaval that wherever he went, things would be in motion. Things that were out of balance would have to rearrange themselves to come into balance. Mm-hmm. And in a sense, he was a great disturber and disturbing by a peaceful activity, you know, whether it was a hunger strike or a silent march or whatever it was, you know, right. his upheaval came about in the most peaceable of fashions. So, you know, that's one example. Um, I could talk about Donald Trump. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, very interesting that this man is born in the life theme that we call the Garden of Eden. We, we probably all have heard the story about the Garden of Eden. It's this just gorgeous place. And then all of a sudden, for one reason or another, you get thrown out. And then you're outside the garden wondering, you know, what am I supposed to do now? And typically for somebody born in this life theme, they come from a very, very bright source, very bright spirit. And they come into the world and around the age of four or five, they suddenly realize that they're not in the same place that they thought they were, that uh-huh. the people around them are not behaving themselves in a way that's integrated, that they're um, not living up to your expectations. And so all of a sudden, at that very young age, you feel like you've been thrown out of the garden. And what can happen for people is that they spend their whole life trying to find the garden again. And you can see it with Donald. He's he's married all kinds of exotic women. He's uh, built all these hotels and casinos and golf clubs and he's got these jets and I mean he's done everything he's got steaks and wine and yeah. water and the whole business he's tried everything and he is still unhappy there is still something inside him that just doesn't click he's got complaints about everybody and the whole thing for anybody with that garden of eden theme the garden's inside it's not on the outside if he makes right. peace with himself if he gets in love with his own self and his own life instead of projecting on everybody else, there will be a massive turnaround. And, you know, my humble view of this is that there are seven odd billion people in the world that are trying to get his attention to this detail. Donald, love yourself and everything will be fine. So there you go, Action Tribe, the Garden of Eden. So, Chetan, before our recording today, you were kind enough to share and talk about my life theme. Could you talk to us a bit about what you got from my life theme? You're born in the life theme, AJ, that we call separation. Okay. And it's what we call an interpersonal life theme. You're somebody who was born wise. Okay. And I always tease people with this degree of wisdom that they come in with that very often while they're laying in their little crib as a baby, Uh they're looking up at the people looking down at them and saying, are you sure you guys know what you're doing? (laughs) Which doesn't mean to be rude to your parents or anything like that, but it's just you come in with that level of authority. And you probably found right from the early days in your life, all kinds of people have been looking for your advice and continue to do so. And it's up to you to see you know, who gets the advice and who doesn't. And that, again, comes down to your design. You know, by design, you have the type of someone we call a projector. Our projectors are here to guide. Uh, we're about 20% of the world's population. We're actually a minority. Um, 
you have what we call emotional authority, which is a lifetime of feeling your way through life. And you'll know about yourself. You've always had a close connection to your spirit nature. And mm -hmm. part of the work that you do is helping people remind themselves about their spirit nature. But the whole thing is to be very selective. How do you go about this in the most selective and clear way? Right. So the life theme that you're born into is the life theme that we call separation. And I know a number of my friends with this particular life theme. And it really is a lifetime of being very discerning. Who gets your input? Who doesn't? Because you see, you could pretty much answer anyone's problem for them. You're actually a healer when I look at your design and the great mm -hmm. healing work that you do is healing people's hearts. They, you know, this is not about going into a hospital or a surgery or anything like that. You do it by right. informing people of what it is in their life that actually holds value for them. Because most people in the world are chasing after things that don't hold value. They're caught up in the material thing and they're not quite sure how to make it work for them. And so most people are living paycheck to paycheck and, you know, not yes. necessarily very happy with their existence. So you're somebody that can inform people, look, heads up, have another look at things, you know, have a look at things in a way that perhaps you have not been looking at. Maybe you're chasing after somebody else's idea of what it is that's worthwhile. So you have that gift to be able to point people's attention towards things that have a value for them. And this life theme of separation is to see, yes, I could jump in on everybody's life. I could, you know, literally walk beside everybody. I could even carry some people through their life because I yeah. have these uh, means of being able to show them how to get much more in touch with their world. But that's this thing of separation. You have to allow yourself to have that certain distance uh, to be able to guide people so that they find their own way, but you give them very, very pointed and very able advice. Wonderful. And so that I don't drain my own self as well, right? Because there are so many opportunities to change and transform and be more and do more for people. But, you know, energy is sometimes limited. Uh, and, and like you've sort of suggested, you need to be discerning about where you give your energy so that you can make or create the, the biggest impact. Yes. Is that correct? It is exactly that, not to drain yourself. And there's one other thing that I would like to say about what I see in your design. Yes. You're a bodhisattva. Yes, I am. Yes. I follow Buddhism as well. <laughs> whether so it, that whether is it so fascinating. The, yeah, whether it comes under Buddhism or whatever, that you are here to uh, draw people to you to help them find their way. Wow. That is, that is really fascinating because our listeners know that a couple of months back, I spoke about the concept of Bodhisattva and that was really well received. I sent a newsletter as well. And for those who are listening, uh, haven't listened before, a Bodhisattva, based on what I know, is somebody who is on the metaphorical raft of life with white waters of challenges and fears all around. And the Bodhisattva is someone who serves people and pulls them onto the raft from these white waters around as opposed to uh, you know benefiting his or her life solely so a bodhisattva is here to serve and that's exactly uh, the way and so eloquently you've put it so thanks a lot for sharing that uh, really profound wisdom and i think a lot of our listeners would want to find out their own life themes as well by getting the book the book of destinies and we'll have the link up in the show notes as well now uh Chetan, let's go back in time now. How did you first come across the concept of human design? What, what was that moment like? <laughs> you know, sometimes when something just hits you over the head and you just get it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I mean, a lot of us can say we've been walking around our life with our eyes shut, you know, sleepwalking or kind of bumbling into things. Mm -hmm. And every now and again, existence is so generous and it just says, you know, heads up, have a look at this. And, uh, yep. oh, Oh, my goodness. I, You know, the world is so full of knowledge. Uh, whether you walk into a library and get overwhelmed by all the books there or you go to a school or university or whatever and you get all this knowledge given to you and you go on the Internet and it's like any question you want can be answered in dozens of different ways. So, so knowledge yes. is just available. The difference is, or what's really important to know about knowledge, is there is a difference between knowledge and knowing. Knowing mm. is an inner thing. Knowing is a recognition. Knowing is that moment of silence where you just get it. It just drops in you. And it's so stunning that you might want to try and tell everybody, hey, everybody, you know, this incredible thing happened to me. Now, let me see. How am I going to say this to you? And that's why enlightenment has never, ever been able to be transferred. Mm -hmm. It's a personal experience. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got to trust ourselves, you know, to... Yes, knowledge is all wonderful, but the knowing is what the game's all about. Knowing and particularly knowing oneself. And that is why I just love human design, because it's a self-empowerment tool. It's an objective science. 
It's not a subjective thing. It's not something you have to fill out a quiz for and get, you know, answers from some system or other. The human design, if when you understand your human design, it, it actually gives you keys to live out in your own life that are nothing but self-empowerment keys. And I would say perhaps the most important one is how to make decisions that are right for you in this lifetime. And human design points that out to you really, really clearly according to your own chart, according to your own design. And once you attune to your own decision-making process, you continuously follow your own truth. Wow. So thanks a lot for sharing uh, those stories, those anecdotes, those examples. Uh, based on what you've shared today, for those who want to find their life's purpose, what is that one action step that you'd like to recommend for our listeners? We've all been given all kinds of great advice in this lifetime. The most important thing is to be true to yourself. And so... My great encouragement, the work I've been doing for all these years, is encouraging people, find out who you are. Find out what you came here for. And if you want a really, really easy way to find that out, look into your human design. You can go on our website. You can get a free report all about you. Uh, you can buy these books. Uh, the Book of Destinies, it will tell you exactly what your life theme is. The one that you agreed to, a soul agreement for this lifetime. Uh, it's available all over the place. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. Uh, the Kindle version is in color. Uh, have a look at it. Check it out. And what I would say about the destiny, when you find your destiny, and this is my just my humble advice about it, when you look, turn to the page where your destiny is in the Book of Destinies, take a deep breath, close your eyes, and have somebody read it to you. Listen to what's written there. This sounds like a good couples exercise <laughs> as well. So thanks a lot for sharing. Action Tribe to access the show notes for today's episode, visit my 7 chakrascom forward slash 192. That's my 7 chakrascom forward slash 192. Believe that it is possible to solve your problem. Tremendous things happen to the believer. So believe the answer will come. It will. This is an amazing quote by Norman Vincent Peale. Action Tribe, for a few seconds, just imagine that the problem that you have in your life right now, whatever type of problem it is, just imagine how you feel or how you are going to feel when the problem is solved. Imagine what you will see when you've overcome that particular challenge in your life. Believe that there is a solution for this challenge because only when you believe will you be able to attract your ideal situation. Your strong belief will help you find solutions, ideas, resources and even people who can get you closer to solving your problem like we're learning today as well. So like Norman Vincent Peale said, believe and the answer will come because it just will. So Chetan, talk to us about a time when you experienced a major life challenge. How did you first enter that situation and then walk us through some of the steps that you took to overcome it? Well, let's just say life is full of challenges. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and I remember, you know, in those... Um, in those travels that I used to do, I mean, I went backwards and forwards to India and uh, driving these magic buses. And then I did a trip through Africa. And the African experience was very different, driving across the Sahara Desert uh, and then uh, arriving in the Cameroon and then driving across through the jungles to Kenya. And I remember a point in time uh, driving across the Sahara when the differential uh, broke on the axle. So all of a sudden the engine would go around, but the wheels wouldn't. And it was serious. Um, I had fortunately packed all kinds of bits and pieces as an engineer, you know, to counter this and uh, replaced it. Um, but I remember, you know, it was touch and go. I was responsible for people that were on the trip with me. And we were there, we were stuck in the middle of nowhere. And there was no traffic, there were no other people around. And I remember just entering into a place, I would say it was the closest I ever came to pure prayer of um, seeing, you know, how do I get out of this? How do I get us out of this? How do I trust my own confidence to be able to do this? And how I trust the wisdom of existence to pull us through. And it was just, you know, going into a place of complete surrender. Surrender to whatever it was that life intended for us. And uh, sure enough, you know, it, it worked out. Um, meeting the challenge uh, dealing with the challenge, but really going right to my core to to draw everything from that core to connect into um, what life intended for us. So I would say ultimately, AJ, it was it was going to that place of complete surrender and um, trusting. Well, thanks a lot for sharing that story. As you look back, if you had to share one life lesson with our listeners based on your story, what would that one life lesson be in one sentence? We are here to be ourself 
that's it. We're not here living somebody else's life. Be true to yourself. Wonderful. Thanks a lot for sharing that. Now, as you shared your story, it's so serendipitous and so synchronistic that I was reading the book uh, David and Goliath by Malcolm Gladwell uh, last night, <laughs> and uh, where he talks about the story of Lawrence of Arabia and how he crosses the desert and the challenges that they come across in the desert. And so your your story is really uh, you know perked up my ears and made me imagine. You shared that during your travels when you traveled to Africa, you had engine troubles in the middle of the Sahara, which I'm sure is such a big challenge and you, more importantly it was not just you right you were responsible for the people with you so there was no traffic no people no water as well and you had to find a way out of this you needed to believe in yourself and you had to go into a place of complete surrender right and 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 it worked out for you because you were able to you know pull out of it because you're here with us so uh, you've taught us effectively today that uh, sometimes in life when you have challenges that are insurmountable seemingly insurmountable uh, we just need to trust uh, in in the force around us and and surrender. So thanks a lot for sharing that. Oh, you're welcome, AJ. Yeah. So action drive. As the days pass, I'm relearning the importance of dreaming and visualizing. I say relearning because as a kid, I was always a dreamer. I was a natural daydreamer, and in a way, I think all kids are. I used to dream about my ideal day, my ideal situation, where I want to be, what I want to do, and no one really told me that something wasn't possible or that it was beyond my reach. But somewhere down the line, I reduced my dreaming and depended more on sheer willpower. Now, don't get me wrong. The willpower is important and determination is, is also important, right? These are forces that will help you take action. But what I'm finding out and what we're learning today is that your real transformative power resides deep within your subconscious mind because in your subconscious mind resides your beliefs, your fears, and your worries. By working on your belief systems, recognizing your fears, and dreaming some more, you are effectively tapping into the power of the subconscious mind because that grand vision that you have in your mind right now, that need to live your purpose, I want to let you know that it is possible. And you are getting there day by day, closer and closer. And like James Allen once so eloquently said, the greatest achievement was at first and for a time a dream. The oak sleeps in the acorn. So Chetan, as on today, what is your life's calling? My life story is one of increasing bliss, one of increasing um, connection with life. And um, yeah, it's this life is a, an extraordinary gift. It's the most amazing Mm -hmm. amazing experience amazing now you've shared with us today so many moments so many magical moments and like tony robbins says at the end of your life when you're on your deathbed you have people around you you're not going to remember the things that you've accumulated you're going to remember the magic moments that you've had in your life so as you recall your your life and the wonderful experiences that you've had was there ever a defining moment that really changed your life defining moments that changed my life um, I would say without question that the most uh, profound moment that changed my life was uh, meeting Osho meeting somebody who uh, became fully enlightened at the age of 21 and carried with him so many uh, extraordinary levels of wisdom and just the most uh, an incredible thing to be around somebody that had had that experience and was able to convey it to other people. Beautiful. When was the last time you've you'd gone to India or Pune for that matter? <laughs> the last travel I did there was in 1995. And, oh, uh, okay. I, I plan within the next two or three years to have another travel there. But uh, I gather it's changed out right. of all proportion. Oh, yeah, it's tremendously changed. Like Pune, if you've been in 95, then you probably won't recognize it right now. I went there about, uh, let's say, about four years back. And I went there earlier about six years back so within one or two years it had changed so much so in your case i'm sure you'll be surprised by the huge malls and the different uh, buildings that have come out up there but uh, i feel it's still it's still beautiful it has this very special quality uh, they call it the oxford of the east because of the number of universities and international students there are and because of the wonderful cuisine as well so i'm sure you're going to well love it. you know i had the good fortune of traveling all around India, driving the buses. And uh, mm. I know there are many places that will not have been touched by the commercialism. Uh, so yes. there are some... There are some extraordinary places in India and, of course, extraordinary people as well. So, yeah, I look forward to my next travel. Absolutely. I'm going to travel there in Feb after two and a half years. So that's going to be something interesting. And with that, we've arrived at the very last round for today, the Wisdom Round. 
So Chetan, what is the best advice that someone's ever given you? I would say the best advice, oh goodness. Um, I mean, it, it all comes down to being true to myself. That's what it comes down to ultimately. It's so easy to get distracted by other people's ideas of what life is, and nobody really knows. But, you know, yes. as individuals, we're here to have our own experience. So that is something that I have picked up over the years, and that is something I would convey to everybody else, you know. Have a full life, you know, be here for you and, you know, yes. be true to your own nature. So name a personal habit that works for you or keeps you going. Well, it's meditation, of course. Got it. So what is your morning routine like? What do you do during the first uh, one or two hours of the day? I always wake up early. Um, so probably about five o'clock and I like to have an hour to sit, um, a sit, to just sit quiet and let the night fade away, let the day come um, it's a very powerful time when the dawn's coming uh, and just mm -hmm. I love to have that quiet space. Name a book that you'd like to recommend for our listeners today. Well, apart from the book that uh, we've just written, uh, The Book of Destinies, I would so recommend that. Um, I would direct people's attentions to a book that Osho has written or at least that he had transcribed. All his books were transcribed from discourses he gave. Uh, he's the most published man of all time. Um, I would recommend a book that really caught my eye and it's called Ancient Music in the pines got it action tribe i know how much you love our book recommendations and i know that many of you purchase these books as soon as you hear them shared on our show that's why audible.com is offering action tribe one free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial so that you can get to check out their amazing service now audible has over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iphone android or kindle including bestsellers like the chakra system by anna dear judith autobiography of a yogi by paramahansa Yogananda and A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com forward slash MSC. Once again, that's audible, A-U-D-I-B-L-E, trial, T-R-I-A-L dot com forward slash MSC for your free audiobook. So Chetan, thank you so much for joining us today. I really enjoyed listening to your stories and your learnings and the wisdom that you shared with us and most importantly the life theme that you shared and the examples were really fascinating and profound before you go tell us something that you're really grateful for and tell us the best way we can find you i'm really grateful for this life um i just the more i see what goes on here the more i just know I'm, <laughs> this is such a lucky lifetime uh, such an amazing time to be here and uh for those that would uh, like to connect, uh, you can please go to our website. Uh, it's called Human Design for Us All. Uh, it's all spelled out in letters. It's a sorry, it's a long website address. Human Design for Us All dot com. Uh, you can get a free report. Uh, you can get a, a comprehensive report for a small fee. Uh, you can buy the books. You can join our courses. And uh, for those that are really interested, uh, we offer readings. My wife and myself. Uh, we have many many years reading for people. It would be our great pleasure to read for you too. So there you go, Action Tribe, humandesignforusall.com. We'll have the link in the show notes as well. Chetan, thank you so much for coming on our show again, talking to us about human design and our life themes and taking us one step closer to a human revolution. Thank you, AJ. Great pleasure being here. Keep up the good work. You are listening to My 7 Chakras. Go to my S E V E N chakras dot com. Download your free gift, get inspired and take action. Transform your life today.